In this video, we're looking at a potentially dangerous storm moving through the south into the southeast. The Storm Prediction Center has already put out an enhanced risk for severe weather today with a 30% chance of damaging winds. We're going to watch how this same storm system will also affect the deep south tomorrow. And then we're looking at next week's system, which is still looking very concerning on the weather models. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Originally, I was supposed to be in the Storm Seeker right now heading to Texas to chase today's severe weather event, but at the last minute, I changed my mind due to the uncertainty of the forecast. It's a 17 hour drive from here to Wichita Falls, Texas, and I've got a newborn, so I don't want to make that trip unless I'm sure that it's going to count. Also, I had to reschedule the members only live stream from yesterday to today, so we're going to be doing that tonight at 6 p.m. So here's your last chance to become a member before the exclusive live stream. Go ahead, do it. And without further ado, let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And as you can see, there's not a lot going on right now, but you can see a precursor to what's about to happen uh, with those Storm Prediction Center outlooks there. You see the colors here? Uh, the way these outlooks work is it's kind of like a ranking system out of five on what to expect as far as severe weather goes. There's five levels. The dark green here is a one out of five. The yellow is a two out of five. And the orange is a three out of five. Uh, if you ever see red on here, that's a four out of five. And then the pink is gonna be five out of five. We've already seen that twice this year. That's the highest risk that the storm prediction center issues and that only happens when we're expecting a tornado outbreak or something like that so today we're not expecting a widespread tornado outbreak but we are expecting some pretty nasty storms down here from oklahoma city down into dallas especially near the texarkana area down to shreveport louisiana and maybe even as far east as jackson mississippi especially as we get into the overnight hours tonight okay as you can see there's nothing on the radar right now it's not raining in most of these areas maybe a couple sprinkles here and there so you might think i'm pulling your leg or something but no uh let me show you what's going to happen in the future on the weather models all right we're going to look at the old trusty her model the h triple r uh this has been you know a really accurate model so far this severe weather season so i'm really interested in seeing what it has to say we're starting off at around 11 a.m eastern today so that's around 10 a.m central uh, and what we're going to be seeing here is a couple showers and maybe a couple thunderstorms just kind of like what we're seeing right now a couple sprinkles around 11 a.m but it's nothing compared to what we're going to see a little bit later uh so let's keep putting this into motion and you can really see those storms are going to start popping up here in central texas around one or two o'clock today when we get that heating that daytime heating uh when this if the sun comes out for a little bit and heats up the atmosphere you're going to see these storms pop up like crazy out here uh, just west of the dallas region down towards waco and austin and at this point the biggest threat with these storms is going to be the hail okay these are going to have uh, some big time hailstones with them more than likely so if you live in this area if you want to put your car in the garage today or uh, if you're going to work park it underneath something because uh, there's more than likely going to be uh, some damaging hail out there you can see these storms are now becoming you know pretty gnarly out there around 3 p.m and this is when the hail is supposed to be the most intense and then eventually what's going to happen is that the hail threat is going to maintain but now we're starting to see a convective linear system of storms form over here and at this point we do have a little bit of a tornado threat and also a straight line damaging wind threat okay the storm prediction center uh the reason they have that enhanced outlook down here for this area is because they do believe that we're going to have some big time problems with damaging winds okay but remember we also do have that five percent chance of tornadoes in this area as well okay as these storms really start to press off to the east here's a look at that lower level jet stream around this time okay you can see really specifically right here in eastern texas and western louisiana uh, we're seeing that jet stream at around 40 or 50 knots uh, which can actually cause some strong tornadoes and it's concentrated right down here in this area and that's where those storms are if we can get a supercell thunder storm to interact with that jet stream uh, somebody in eastern texas or western louisiana is going to see a tornado today and that actually could be a strong long track tornado if it's able to survive in the environment that it's in and a couple of things that may not allow us to have you know super big tornadoes is the fact that these storms are all jumbled up together i've talked about this a million times before uh, tornadoes require a lot of energy tornadoes have to take resources from the atmosphere all the way around them uh, so if uh, the storm that a tornado is going to be inside of is is surrounded by a bunch of other storms and it's not going to be able to steal as much resources as it needs to cause a violent tornado and as you can see we've got a lot of storms all right next to each other here so best case scenario is this all becomes one big giant mess of thunderstorms and it's just a heavy rain and wind threat i do think that 6 p.m all the way until like midnight or 1 a.m tonight it's going to be prime time tornado threat uh, once again it's not a crazy widespread tornado outbreak that we're expecting but if we do get a tornado it'll be in that time period so make sure you have some 
way of getting weather warnings tonight if you live in this area. Hopefully you have a NOAA weather radio, but if you don't, turn your alerts on on your phone. And as always, uh, if a significant situation is unfolding, I will be going live on this YouTube channel to cover it. So as I push this forward a little bit, you can see that these storms really start to congeal together. And now we're talking about, you know, a big heavy rain threat. The tornado threat diminishes the more and more that the storms look like this and less like scattered storms, the less of a tornado threat we have. But we have a new tornado threat sparking up back here uh, right around the Red River region in Oklahoma and Texas. Because we do expect along the surface low pressure system right at the triple point there, we're going to have some supercell thunderstorms pop up here. And these, if they can actually, you know, be isolated and be out by themselves, they could rotate uh, and cause tornadoes as well. So we have two areas uh, where tornadoes are possible uh, today into late tonight. And that's where it's going to be. The Dallas area, I think you're good. I don't think you have to worry about tornadoes. I think hail is going to be your biggest threat. The Oklahoma City area, heavy rains really going to be your biggest threat. And then maybe some wind later on. So let's keep pushing this forward. At this point, these storms right here are going to be big time wind makers. Okay, so watch out for that uh, around midnight tonight. Also, we have a convective linear system of storms forming up here in Oklahoma. And you can see this one right here is trying to bow out. And we call that a bow echo. That one, if that comes to fruition, that could actually cause some uh, straight line damaging winds as well up there in Oklahoma. So watch out for that, especially around 4 a.m. tonight. Look at that. That actually looks pretty uh, impressive and mean <laughs> as that moves uh, towards Arkansas uh, out of uh, Oklahoma there. That Once again, that's a big time straight line damaging wind threats. You got a cold pool of air pushing these storms forward into warmer air. We got to watch out for that late tonight into the early morning hours. And now let's move over to the east. Let's watch how these storms are going to affect Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, and Tennessee, and all these wonderful places over here. I'm going to take it back just a little bit. Look at here. You can see as these storms move in around 1 a.m. tonight in Mississippi, I do think the biggest threat here is going to be wind and rain, okay? There is going to be an isolated tornado threat over here uh, because especially on that southern side, we're going to have that jet stream really, you know, it's 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 pretty good. Like it's, it's screaming. Uh, there's a little concentrated area down here where it could be going at around a 70 knots. So we do have to watch that closely. Uh, the good thing is possibility of us having, uh, isolated supercells at this point is pretty low, but we've got to watch these Southern storms, especially the ones that are by themselves. Uh, if this is the way the radar actually looks early in the morning on Saturday, we got to watch those closely because if they can interact with that jet stream, they are going uh, to rotate and cause tornadoes. So uh, another, big problem here look at this big giant hundreds of miles long uh, line of thunderstorms moving over the same areas over and over again here that's flash flooding okay so here's where it gets interesting okay so now we're in the early morning hours that original convective linear system that will have already probably caused some uh, wind damage and some flash flooding problems and maybe some tornadoes here and there that's going to be moving out into Georgia okay and once it makes it into Georgia I do think it's going to be significantly weaker the main threat here once again is if we see a a bow echo line like this moving through southern Georgia is going to be damaging winds. Okay, so we got to watch out for that. Uh, but watch this as this moves out, watch the tail end back here. This is something that the models, you know, really didn't show until here recently. Uh, we could see during the heating of the day on Saturday more storms pop up. Okay, and these storms are all isolated. You see how they're kind of like all by themselves? That's what we don't like to see usually because, you know, these can easily become supercells. And there is a little bit of that leftover flow in the jet stream to where some of these storms could be tornadic. Here's a look at the significant tornado parameter during this time. As you can see um, right here around central Mississippi, central Alabama, uh, during two and three o'clock, we have some areas that could be near three, four, and five. That's five out of 10. Uh, this, the significant tornado parameter model just kind of takes a look at all of the elements in the atmosphere and gives us a rating out of 10 as to how likely it may be uh, to see a tornado within a certain area. So, you know, five out of 10 isn't absolutely insane, but given the storm mode that we're seeing here with isolated storms, it's definitely something we've got to watch out for. I would say that there is definitely a tornado threat uh, tomorrow on Saturday uh, through m uh, much of Mississippi and Alabama right in through here. And then as those storms move off to the east, once again, they become squall lines 
and that tornado threat uh, drastically uh, diminishes, okay? And then I think we're finally done talking about storms, uh, at least for this area, around 2 a.m. on Sunday. Just for consistency's sake, let's rewind this back and let's actually look and see how it's going to affect the east as well. I'm gonna run this through. Uh, no big tornado threat over here, okay? If there is gonna be tornadoes, it's gonna be on the southern side down here. South Carolina, North Carolina, I think you're good. Uh, South Carolina, I think your biggest threat's gonna be if, if we actually do get a little uh, multi-quasi-linear convective system moving through like that, you're gonna get some, uh, maybe some strong winds on Saturday. Uh, mostly just a, a heavy rain threat. Uh, as this moves through okay so here's a full progression of the storm looking at the east coast there it is and there she goes all right now let's take a look into next week and talk about our next severe weather threat because really these two severe weather threats are the main thing that we've got to be watching uh what we're looking at right now is today's storm system okay what we're looking at is the instantaneous flash rate uh, this kind of shows where uh, lightning strikes are possible where the more dense areas of lightning strikes are going to occur and we can kind of uh, see where storms are going to be uh given where lightning strikes are gonna be, right? So I kinda of like to use this as like an imaginary simulated radar, even though the radar won't look this intense, okay? All right, so here we are, April 27th. That's the next severe weather outbreak that we're gonna be talking about. And uh, I know all of us know what happened 10 years ago on April 27th down here in the uh, deep south. It's gonna be the 10 year anniversary of the super tornado outbreak. Uh, terrible day. Uh, everybody who lives down there and anybody in the world who is interested in weather uh, knows all about that day. And um, I know it's kind of eerie. I know it's kind of scary to be talking about another possibly significant threat for severe weather on April 27th, but it is going to be for an area west of the deep south. And I really don't think that we're gonna see anything as significant as that, okay? But this absolutely does look pretty significant. Um, as you can see here on April 27th, around 5 p.m., the Euro model is suggesting that we're gonna have a large area of severe thunderstorms popping up and the mode of which they're gonna be popping up looks to me like scattered supercell thunderstorms. Uh, it's not very often that on the instantaneous flash rate, you actually see as you know, isolated uh, supercell thunderstorms popping up. That's pretty concerning to me. If this was to come to fruition, we could be talking about a big time, a tornado threat with this storm. And that's kind of what the models have been showing for a while, okay? So uh, let's see what happens with this as we push it forward. Thankfully, eventually the storms do become stronger and they congeal into a line of storms. And at this point, I don't think that uh, the tornado threat is going to be as big as right there when these storms first pop up. But these storms are going to eventually move all the way through uh, into the Ohio Valley region and the deep south. But it looks like they're going to weaken significantly. The biggest threat looks to me like it's going to be right in this area right here, which is absolutely ideal for storm chasing. So once again, it looks like I'm going to be heading out that way around this uh, time period. And don't worry, I'll still be able to do my videos. Uh, I'll just be doing them in hotels and they probably won't be as edited. Let's take a look at some of these severe weather ingredients that we have and see what's causing these storms. First thing we want to look at is CAPE, all right? <laughs> Convective available potential energy and buddy, do we have that off the chain out here uh, in western Oklahoma and southeastern Kansas right in here. We're talking about uh, convective energy values near uh, 4,000 or over 4,000 in some places. And that's absolutely, you know, perfect for uh, getting those updrafts to really spark up. It's basically like having a powder keg out here. If you've got 4,000 joules per kilogram of cape and you have a, a reason for that warm air to get lifted up into the atmosphere, you're going to see explosive thunderstorms. First off, though, like I said, even though we've got cape, we've got to have a reason for warm air to lift up so we can get updrafts and that reason is going to be there all right we have uh, some pretty good dew points in the mid 60s near 70 right next to an area of drier air and of course along that boundary and as it pushes east uh, that's going to force the warm air up into the atmosphere remember cold air sinks whenever you push cold air especially when you force cold air underneath warm moist air the warm moist air gets flung up into the atmosphere it condenses and creates storms and of course we're all very familiar with this map the uh, lower level jet stream pretty concerning uh, once again a broad area of jet stream winds over 50 knots not looking good okay this is you know if we can hold this this is going to be a tornado you know system things can still change we're still 100 hours away from this event and as of right now this latest model run uh, shows as you can see it's 2 a.m at what we're looking at right now watch me move this forward the storms don't really fire up until 5 p.m and at at that point for some reason the jet stream just completely dissipates and if that happens we 
won't be talking about as much of a tornado threat. Uh, but as we go later on into the evening, it ramps back up and it gets big again once it moves over into this area. So, you know, we'll see that change. We'll see that move around as we get closer to the event. But the synoptic picture here says strong lower level jet stream, lots of convective energy, high dew points, strong low pressure system, cold front, Put those things together and it's a no brainer. A big severe weather system is gonna come out of that. So paying attention to the intricacies of each run here is gonna be a waste of time. Basically we know that somewhere uh, in this area is gonna see a big severe weather outbreak in this time period. So we need to start preparing now. Okay, that's all the weather talk I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you slap the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Turn those notifications on, all right? Our notification squad, once again, we gotta make it bigger. I'm super excited to talk to you guys, you know, kinda like one-on-one -on -one in our exclusive members only live stream tonight. It should be fun, should be informative, and it should be awesome. I'll see you there, and uh, until next time, goodbye.